Hey YouTube, it's Mal with Hubble's Reptiles, and now that I am done emailing all my congressional people, because again, we filmed these back to back, so y'all will get that hopefully. Uh, and I've settled down a little bit. It's time to do another video about business. And this one, we've talked about this a little bit before. We're gonna kind of go over some things again uh, on how to set up your business if you're gonna run a hobby business like this. And then we're gonna slide over to Patreon and we're gonna talk about some of the options because I know a lot of you have been on Discord. Anna keeps me posting what y'all are talking about on there. Talk about how do you ensure a business like this, some of the options you have, what we do, uh, what some other things you can do, and, and kind of the best way to approach that and some pitfalls of it. Um, so that's what we'll talk about. That's how we're going to do it. So let's get started first of all. So if you're going to run a business, the first thing I can tell you is assuming you know our, our Congress doesn't pass stupid legislation like the uh, Lacey Act, is try to run on the up and up. Okay, and what I mean by that is. You know, I, I, you're going to meet somebody in your walks through life, I promise, I know people like this, who will try to fight every last bit not to pay any tax, to try to hide everything. And look, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you how to do that on a lot of it, okay? Because there's a way, you know, there's a way you can lift the rug up and push it all underneath. And uh, it's, it's really great to do that. But don't do it the redneck way or the... Uh, I'm just going to call it the redneck way. Don't do it the redneck way. Don't just go, well, I'm only going to take cash and not pay my taxes. And I don't mean that as a shout out to Redneck Jeff. He doesn't do that. He does it the right way. Uh, and don't, don't, don't try to hide it that way. Be transparent on the up and up. Because the government, in its infinite wisdom, has given us ways as business owners to hide it anyway. And the reason they do that is because most of them in there are also business owners. And, and so they're going to use those in a much more magnified way than we do as small business owners. But they make sure and give themselves the tax breaks we just take advantage of them too. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. So first of all, if you're going to form a business, once you get where you're actually producing and selling, you don't have to do this if you're only producing a couple of clutches and you're selling to buddies. Not needed. Just do what you do. Uh, don't worry about it too much. You know, if you want to report it, report it. It's probably a good idea, but... Even if you don't and they find out, you're going to be able to show what it was and pay a little tax. Not, not a huge deal. But when you start actually making money at it and you're producing, you know, a, a number of animals and you're going to maybe start going to shows or you're going to start posting and selling online where your name's going to be out there, at that point in time, you definitely need to actually form a real business. Now, there are multiple ways to do that. Uh, there's sole proprietorships, partnerships, a limited liability company is also known as an LLC. And of course, I'm talking about on the American side, the people to the north or the south or the east or the west outside of our borders is probably entirely different for you. Um, but for us, it's kind of some of the things that we can use. You're also talking corporation, but I don't think you're going to really have to run a corporation for this. So probably a sole proprietorship, <coughs> a partnership, or an LLC. For us, we went with an LLC. Uh, the reason we did that, so I'll be honest, it just seemed like the simplest thing to set up. We didn't go hire a fancy schmancy attorney for this. We went online, we paid like a little bit of money, filled out the form, filed it. We were done. People were like, oh, it's hard to make an LLC. It's not hard. You fill out the form, and then you find where you're supposed to send it to, you submit it, and you're done. That's your business license. They don't send you anything you hang on the wall. At least not us. We're not in the city. We don't have to get a license from the city or anything like that. We're out in the country. Uh, but that's how we got our name registered as an LLC through the great state of Kansas. And then every year they come back and they say, hey, guess what? If you want to stay as an LLC, pay your pound of flesh. I don't know. What is it, like 120 bucks we send them or some crap like that? I don't know. It's our accountant. No, he makes me sit that. Okay. I, I ask it almost but I can't remember what the total is. You sit you send your pound of flesh, you pay your toll, so to speak, and you keep your LLC license and you all move on. And that LLC license is what they're going to use to do things like, you know, file your taxes and stuff like that. Uh, so it's important to get that. Uh, it keeps things clean. It also, with the limited liability company, people think it's going to completely insulate you from everything. It has some of that aspect in it, but you're still not completely insulated. That's why we're going to talk about some insurance things that are very important on Patreon, uh, which we use one for here. We use a different one for the shop we own a part of. So we'll tell you some different paths to that and what to talk to your guy about. Um, it's also going to be different depending on where you live and state to state a little bit and all that. So 
once you have that LLC, what does it really do then? Well, one, your name is your name. So you've got some, some ownership of that name, you know, uh, it also gives you an ID number, tax ID number for the business. So if you want to do some things without paying taxes, like let's say I'm going to go to a company and I'm going to buy shirts. I'm then going to sell at a show. I don't have to pay sales tax on those shirts. I can show them some information and fill out some forms for them and then they don't charge me sales tax, which is perfectly legal. And the reason for that is because when you're buying in most places to resell, only the end user has to pay sales tax. So you're gonna charge your end client sales tax. You, as buying wholesale to resell, do not have to. Now, if I buy from them and I don't have that, I have to pay sales tax because they have to show that they've got the tax. Or they're gonna get billed for it either way. So uh, that tax exemption is how that works when you're gonna resell stuff. So very important to get that if you're gonna carry certain things. Um, the next thing I'm gonna recommend to you is if you start doing actual amounts of money unless you're a CPA which is like a certified public accountant and I'm gonna imagine you're probably not there's probably some guys in the comment I'm a CPA good for you bro you can ignore this next part if you're not an accountant hire one don't walk your happy ass down to H&R Block okay don't do it don't try to do it yourself I did that once it worked out okay but when my actual CPA saw it he went holy shit that worked let's never do that again and if it becomes a problem I'll fix it Hire an accountant, okay? Hire one. Collect all your paperwork and say, here you go. And then walk away. Let him do his shit. That's what he's there for. And that's who's going to sweep stuff under the rug. A couple things that you can use for that, too. I'm going to tell you how to save some money here in a minute. So that accountant, he's going to charge you. It ain't going to be cheap. But I'm going to tell you now, you have two options when it comes to paying that bill, okay? One, I can pay my accountant. Two, I can pay the U.S. government. My accountant's probably going to charge me less. And even if it's the same, ask myself this, would I rather pay my accountant or I'd rather pay the U.S. government? My accountant doesn't try to take away my rights. U.S. government does. My accountant doesn't do stupid stuff, at least not that I know about. The U.S. government sometimes does. I'd rather pay my accountant. My money stays local. Give the U.S. government, I mean, they buy a golden toilet. I don't know what the hell they do with that. So I'd rather pay my accountant anyway. So how is that going to save you money? So when you do this, let's say, and I'm just going to pick some numbers out of my ass. This is not our numbers. I want to be clear. But let's say you do $100,000 in sales, okay? And Uncle Sam wants 20% of that. It's actually more. It's more than you think because when you run your own business, uh, your Social Security taxes are higher, plus some other things are higher because usually your employer kicks in a part and you kick in a part. Well, now you're kicking in your part. And you're also kicking in your employer's part because you're your own damn employer. It's kind of like some weird family thing about being your own dad. It's strange. But you have to pay the whole thing. So uh, you're going to get hosed. So if you have $100,000 that you did in sales, you're going to probably end up paying twenty five or thirty or 35000 at least in taxes, all told. And that's if you just go, well, shit, I made $100,000. Fuck. But let's take that money. And again, this is just numbers I pulled out of my ass. So you're not... I just like working with whole numbers. So... On this side, you have $100,000, right? <laughs> there we go. Ooh. On this side, you have $100,000. See what happens. Here, I'm going to pay my accountant. He's going to take $1,000. We're going to lose $1,000 to the accountant. Here, I don't. Right here, I say I'm going to do it the easy way, and we just pay Uncle Sam whatever we're told we owe him, and we're going to lose, we'll say, we'll be conservative, $30,000. We're still going to pay over here. But what he's going to do is say, well, it cost you, you know, you had $100,000, right? And my accountant's going to go, oh, well, it cost you this much to do business. Like, you know, you had to buy X, Y, and Z. So maybe, like for us, you know, paying for a facility, we don't get out of everything because we bought it. When you rent, you get to claim the whole thing. When you buy, you don't. But I get to claim all my utilities and everything else. Let's say I get to knock off at least 1500 a month uh, on average for that kind of shit. So that's going to be, I'll say 15000 for the year. A little less than 1500 a month. No. Did a snake just fart? That's pretty funny. I swear to God that wasn't me. And if I did it, I would claim it. And I can actually smell one. Just took a shit too. Uh, whew. So they're going to get rid of that from like house facility expense, right? Um, and then 
all these things are going to come off here. You're going to have that. You're going to have shipping that's going to come off. If you'll spend several, let's say we spent three thousand dollars this year in shipping. We'll spend like you know ten thousand dollars buying snakes and supplies. You know what I mean? All this kind of shit's going to come off of there. So when you have that accountant before long, before long, you get to take all this off. So that hundred thousand, let's say it turns into seventy thousand by the time he's done. Not bad. Now I'm only going to pay, you know, 30% on 70000 which is, what, seven fourteen twenty one thousand. So I'm already $9,000 cheaper. If I had to pay 1000 to get that, I'm already $8,000 cheaper. And again, made up numbers. Oh! But that $1,000 is a business expense. It know? is. I get to claim that on my taxes, too. When you claim something on your taxes, there's a misnomer there. People are like, oh, I claim it on my taxes, therefore I have to pay. No, dipshit. There's, that's not how that works. When you claim it on your taxes, it just means you don't have to pay taxes on it. See what I'm saying? There's an exemption. If I have an exemption of this much, now um, there are things that will get taxes completely wiped off the map, but typically your business expenses, it's not like I spent $2,000 on business, therefore I pay $2,000 less in taxes. No. If you try to do that, you're going to go to prison. Okay? Prison bad. Prison bad. If you spend $2,000 to run your business, you didn't make that $2,000, therefore they can't expect you to pay income tax on that $2,000. That's how it works. So it lowers on that front. Uh, but here's a cool thing. So now, let's say I made $70,000, right? That's my current income. It's going to drop me a tax bracket for one. And then on top of that, if this is my only income, I still get to take, if I'm not itemizing, my standard U.S. deduction off of that, which I'd get to do here, bringing that down to $60,000. And then, even though I took a standard non-itemizes, I can actually still itemize my business expenses. That's why you send that shit to your accountant. He will find those for you. So maybe I have a home office. Maybe I have all kinds of gas every time I travel. I do something snake-related. I have my gas, a little bit of per diem. He knows what we can claim on all of that. So I had to send him that. I'm like, this is what I did. And he... he does some magic. I don't know what he does, but he does all that. And pretty soon this number 60,000 starts dropping dramatically. And I'll be honest, guys, at the end of the year, you got to remember too, Kurt and I, if this was our numbers, we would each get half of it. Uh, the way ours is set up on an LLC. Here's the kicker. Uh, I don't really pay much taxes on my reptile business. I pay all the taxes I'm required to pay. But by the time we factor in all of this, my mileage I drive, things I get to deduct because of what's in my house, etc., etc., etc. Pretty soon, my reptile income just goes down and down and down and down and down. I promise you, my accountant has saved me and Kurt thousands of dollars. Not hundreds, thousands. Not hundreds of thousands. That would be really awesome. But maybe one day he'll get there. Uh, we have to make a lot more for him to save us hundreds of thousands. But he saves us thousands of dollars. And he does it in a way that's A, legal, and B, more importantly, keeps this guy from going to prison because I am way too pretty to go. Like, the things people want to know. It's terrible. Can't go there. Uh, so trust your account. And then if we do get audited, guess what? He goes with us since he's a CPA and certified. He's going to fix all that shit and keep us out of prison anyway. As long as you do one very important thing with your account. Okay? I'm going to write a word. This word is very, very important to your accountant. Okay? There. Be honest with your accountant. If you lie to your accountant and you're trying to hide money on your own and do some weird ass shit, and so you're trying to lie and sneak things through, one, he's going to help you a ton anyway if you got a good one. So just trust him. Two, when you do that, he can't help you. And then when you're sitting in an audit room and he's explaining something to the feds and they go, that ain't what happened. And they know what happened. And then he looks at you and goes, hey, gee whiz, you lied to me. You're on your own, dipshit. You're going to go to prison. Don't lie to your accountant. So the biggest thing for a business is, to me, when you start to get to that point where you're going to look like you're going to be profitable, because um, you can't. Here's the thing, people are like, well, I want to do it as soon as I can, so I can, I can claim my losses now. Well, losses, if you have losses, you can claim those. But if you continually have losses all the time and you never have profits, the government comes in and says, that's not a business. Businesses are made to make money. They do lose sometimes. But if you just continually lose every year, they come back and say, not a business. 
and then all those losses you claim go away and then you're gonna pay back taxes on the crap. So I, I wouldn't do it day one unless you were setting up to be a business. You need to be able to show you're actually a business, not just running a hobby. Like I can't claim that I'm a car business because I own a lot of cars. I'm not attempting to really make money on it. I just buy cars and I never sell them. Like, unless I get too many and I'll sell one, then I'm going to buy something different. So just, you got to be functioning as a real business before you do that. So that's kind of it. There's no secret. People will tell you this is hard. It's not hard. It's definitely worth doing. It's going to cost you just a little bit of money to get that LLC. Uh, it won't cost you much for a partnership on our reptile shop. We are listed as a partnership. I do believe not an LLC. Am I correct on that, Kurt? I'm not sure. I think we are. Uh, that comes with some different problems. Here, we're listed as an LLC with two owners, myself and Kurt. What does happen if you're an LLC, though, if you have a, a partner, one thing that's going to happen, no matter how much money the business makes, if the business made a million dollars, Kurt's going to be on the hook for $500,000. I'm going to be on the hook for $500,000. It doesn't matter if Kurt only took $200,000 of that profit and I took $800,000 of that profit. He's still on the hook for the five hundred. dollars so it's going to be split through that equally. Um, the way that tax works, too, is the business really never pays tax. I mean, it'll pay like sales tax if it needs to and things like that. But at the end of the day, the business runs its tax dollars in and says, we profited this much money, and then that profit shows up on our personal income taxes. And that's where we get taxed. So people are like, oh, my business paid this in taxes. Not here, not through an LLC. My business made this much in profit, and then I got taxed this much because of it. So um, it's really good to give just all of that there to your account. He's probably going to want you to run software like QuickBooks. Do it. It makes his life easier, and he makes your life easier. Uh, I suck at that. I'll be honest. He hates me for it, but it, it definitely is a good thing. Kurt, anything you want to add? You've used account services and business stuff more than I have, so now is a good time for you to throw in your two cents whatever I screwed up or anything else you want to add. No, I think you um, basically described it pretty good. I would just say that it's it's important to track everything. Yes. And then also, yes, to have, instead of trying to do it on your own, you know, when it comes to business, you know, it's way better to have an accountant do it. Yeah, and there's some things you can cheap out on in life, okay? I, I mean, I, I'm not a name brand kind of guy. I like my always save, my off-brand stuff, because it's really the same crap. And I know that's true in certain aspects, because well, I have family that's worked in the food industry and watch the labels change on the machine while they're packing up the same meat. But do not cheap out on your account. I'm not saying the most expensive account is always the best. What I'm saying is read reviews, find one that's recommended, go meet with them, talk with them, okay? And, and make sure you're comfortable with them, and then hire them. That's how we found this one. This one had worked for Kurt on the archery shop. It came to him recommended by several after he changed accountants. Uh, then Manhattan Reptile World was going to use it. And then we also decided to use it for Olympus. So that same accountant handles my personal taxes and my wife's personal taxes. He handles my shop's taxes. And he handles my business's taxes. He also, I believe, still handles Kurt's personal taxes too. Yeah. So all of this comes to him. And he spits out a bill. And we get this nice folder that shows everything. And it's all kind of laid out there. Um, and I'm extremely happy with the service. And I think it's worthwhile. Some of the advantages to actually being a business really quick. <laughs> you know, when it's just you doing it, sometimes having that business name just adds a little bit of credibility as well. It also makes it much easier for the tax situation we just talked about. And when you're licensed through the state that you're in, that makes it easier to get whatever city licenses you need, which we do also deal with that because of our shop being in the city, we have to have file with the state of Kansas, which we are as I believe a partnership, maybe an LLC, I have to double check on that. We have to then have a pet shop license through the state of Kansas, which we, we do, we have to pay for that every year, which includes having vet inspections come in on every other year, I think, we have to do every, every year. year. So mm -hmm. the vet inspection has to come in and we have to pass all of that, which we always do. The fire people have to come in and pass us for fire code about once a year. And then they have to come back and we have to fix all the extension cords, or at least hide them, uh, to, to pass that typically. You know, 
And then I think, don't we have to pay a pound of flesh to the city every now and then too for something that they don't do or are supposed to do? No, that's it. We just have to pass our fire, pass our state, and then like multiple things. And then we have to and be... And randomly the FDA will stop by and check us out. Oh yeah, the FDA. Those guys come in too and they always check and we always refine there. You also have to be in a spot in our case in a city that's zoned for business. Yeah, buddy. So there's a lot if you're in town. But it's all easier if you've got your legitimate business license to make all of that kind of work. Uh, so so do that. Just take the time. Get your LLC. Plenty of websites you can just download it on and do it. I promise you it's not that hard. Anything you want to add, Kurt? No. All right, guys. After that, we're going to get back to showing snakes because we went on a political rant. Now we kind of touched on LLC. We'll talk about our breeding plans again next for another wreck so you can see why you need that LLC. We're going to make some badass animals like that. Now we're going to start a Patreon and talk about insurance situation, how it differs between here and the shop. Thank you. We'll catch you all next time.